every time I get done, it changes on me, you know, so, so whatever. Oh, um, last thing you probably got to just take the, 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 that, you know, before you it had, you have to pick up bootstrap and stuff. Now the only thing you really have to pick up is like flash box and grid and then you're set. Yeah, I mean, I could have done some Flexbox, but I'm just trying to, like, you know, I'm trying to really, really hone my vanilla skills as well. Like, yeah, yeah you Flexbox, know, I just, Flexbox, Flexbox and Grid is vanilla now. It's built yeah, in it's in built in, way. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what I should have done. I just like to try to, like, do things as simple as possible. And then what I'm going, doing right now is like, oh, wrap it in a div. Wrap that thing in a div, you know, that kind of stuff. So, but, uh, what I'll do, what, what I want to do today to make it kind of, uh, I want to go back over how I actually yes. went through the, the stuff I got back from Google. And I think that'll help you or yeah, from the forums, I think that'll help you see wh the, my, how I had to hack it apart. So, uh, let me share my screen with you and I'm recording this too. So uh, I can cool. send you the right, link. Yeah. At least I yeah, think I'm I recording would... it. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, if you want, dude. We can, uh, do, do you have Streamlabs downloaded? What is Streamlabs? Uh, Streamlabs, do you know what OBS stream is? Streamlabs, mm -mm, mm -mm. Do, do you know what Streamlabs or OBS is? Nope. All right, so uh, you know what live streaming is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so basically, like OBS, uh, open source, open, broadca open broadcast software, you can use to, uh, are you on a Mac or on Windows? I'm on Mac. Okay. So you would have to download uh, OBS. So, excuse me, I think I got a code or something. My whole thing right here, but it's cool. But uh, so basically, with, with, I use Streamlabs, which is a fork of OBS, and OBS is an open source broadcast software, which allows you to stream. Can you hear me okay? I hear you great. Okay, which allows you to uh, stream um, to straight to YouTube, or in this case, it allows you to stream straight to um uh restream and that will because i have the restream key and i could send it to you but you're recording already so that's fine but it would allow you to it would allow you to stream to restream and with restream i have it set up where we stream to like five six different places right now or five different places right now we stream to facebook or yeah we stream to facebook youtube twitch periscope you now mixer oh wow yeah. And then it saves those as videos on the site that people can then they're, they're open for everybody to search and look at. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, totally. I mean, not right now, but, uh, I mean, this is going to be let loose and jank. So, but yeah, no, that sounds awesome. That's awesome. Are you streaming some of the, um, study groups that way? That's how I usually stream all the study groups mm. or everyone that I do. I use, I stream like that. Um, some guys, they prefer to just uh, record as they're going and then upload it to YouTube later. Cool. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll look that, I'll, I'll look that up. Uh, open. Yeah, there it is. Open broadcast. OBS studio. Yeah, I yeah. Could totally have a, ooh, I wonder if I can find it for 1010. I'll have to see what I can do because I'm only running 1010 and the, the one that, uh, the latest release is for 1011, but I'm sure that they, oh, Mac, uh, the ones. Oh, the Mac uh, version? yeah but i'm sure yeah they have previous releases i can figure that out yeah. later so uh, let me share my screen okay yeah which one do i want is it this one cool do you see one that has the study group test responses google sheet uh, study, study group test response oh whoops there we go how's that uh yes okay cool um and and that pulls in. Cool. Awesome. Um, that'll make my life easier. I have two monitors set up right now and make my life easy. So if you note, so I'm, I'm going to go back to the form. This is a form that you set up that I was working on. And you notice it for the titles, I have really simple words. And then I have descriptions. Yeah. And so these titles, you know, the four of them, Username, commitment, technology, beginning are this are the headings of the study group, and so that simplifies things because I only have one word that I'm grabbing. Um, rather than you know, like if if your Google form like had the big sentence before, and that's oh, was that's that would be what it put in the heading here for the um 
for that column of data. And so just to make it easier, I did it that way. So we'll have to either adjust your form a little bit uh, or just, you know, that, that all be pretty easy. Um, yeah. So you look, I mean, basically this using a Google spreadsheet as your JSON backend um, and then this stack overflow and the comments, all of these comments are important too, because basically what has happened is Google has changed how a lot of things operate because of uh, cross uh, scripting, cross site scripting attacks. Oh, they were getting affected by that too. It's that is I think it's Spectre. Is it the Spectre virus? They just like shut things down because it. What you used to be able to do is pull the JSON data or the HTML data straight off of their sheets. And they no longer, and then put it up onto another website, and they no longer allow that to happen because you know that's that's a vector of attack for scripts. So uh, I'm going to, yeah, that's perfect. So I'm going to go back to the proof of concept. So I just remember this isn't style. This is just me making the proof of concept and getting it. You know these titles. This is a UL list of the people's names. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the same thing. Remember JavaScript full 6 p.m. There were the six people and then there was another seven people because they had to make two. And if you remember when we looked at this last time, I actually had it styled to the site using Bootstrap and these were cards. But I just want to show you how the data works here. Um, ah. But this is basically the same. Uh, it's slightly changed because once I got the proof of concept to work, I then started, I moved it over to the page that I pushed up to the repo, but it's basically the same algorithm that does the sorting, basically. Uh, and you see, like, I was able to kind of get the opens to work, but they don't really work. They look, uh, I discovered they didn't, that's why I removed it off the other one, but that's okay. Um, and the reason I wanted to show this, because it's going to be much easier for me to show you what the data looks like when it comes back from the sheet. Oh, so, okay. So, again, this is, this is, you know, you see here, this is the uh, POC, the proof of con uh, concept, and you probably recognize some of the script a little bit like it was before. You know, the sort people, the append groups. Again, basically the same, the same algorithm, the same JavaScript to make the sorting happen. So let me put in a console log. So um, append groups is the big function. It's an async function, meaning that um, when it runs, you can wait for it to gather the data. Um, and then once it finishes, it will do stuff with the data. That's the request or the response, the request response cycle. When you get into node where you're actually dealing with the server, that's how it works. Like I send a call out to a web URL. That's my with headers and things I want. That's my request. The goes to a server, it grabs all the information I'm looking for, and it sends me a package back, and that's the response. And that's kind of that's why it has to be asynchronous because different people in different parts of the world, that stuff's going to be coming back at different t rates of time. And JavaScript mm -hmm. is built just to do kind of like HTML, and CSS, it just wants to go to the next line of code. So if you you can always see this if you console log like in the middle of a request, you'll get an empty response because it hasn't finished gathering its data before it runs that next line of code. This async is a way, used to use, you use promises. You've heard of promises a little, uh, you'll find out more, but basically async await is a new, is a, uh, I think it's the most new syntax to kind of do that, ask something for a request, wait or wait for it to do its stuff when it's done doing its stuff move to the next line with that response and and then go and do the next thing so uh sort people is what basically i grab the groups i save those into variables study and build even though we haven't really worked on build it's really set up for study right uh then i sort so I only so that's why I'm only sorting people using study here. Study is the list of all the stuff, and I can show you that. Oh, 
Oh yeah, dude. Definitely want to see that because I remember you telling me it was like a big, huge, like list. Mhm. So again, what I've done is I've grabbed the link. The study link is the actual link to the, it's this link base basically modified a bit to the UR to the to the spreadsheet. It then grabs it and then I put it into the variable study. Uh, where'd it go? And then this is what I get back. I get this array study. So study is an array. Probably should have been better if I had to put study array to make more sense. But study is an array of these objects. And so I'll just open one object. So this is what I'm really getting back. Okay. Uh, from, from the call. Uh, it's got, it tells me basically a little bit about what, how the spreadsheet is set up, uh, what I'm asking for. Um, this is some, this category has something to do with Google and its schemas. I'm not really sure. Um, GSX beginning, remember where you saw beginning? So that's how they set it up. It's, they, it's an object that's grabbing stuff out of the beginning column, and this is the content that's in that one column, 12 a.m. It's got its commitment, again, GSSX commitment, full-time six hours a day. This is for person, the very first person in the list. You see their name is Tim Tebow. <laughs> yeah. This is the timestamp when they did it. This is the technology they want for, but they all use this kind of format here, GSX username, dollar sign, T, Tim Tebow, and this is the content I actually want. We actually need to sort on. And this is just how it comes back. Each one comes back like this. Obviously, way more data than we need, right? I just needed to have the beginning commitment, technology, and the username. Because I don't even want their email address. We're not, we're not giving people's email addresses out. You're just collecting that so you can email people later or do whatever you need to do, whatever you want to do with it. The users don't need to see that. So that... That, so basically, that's, this, isn't the, this isn't how the data comes back directly from Google. This is just my first sort of the data. So let me go back to here. Now, you, says, you say it's not how it comes back from Google. Right. So I'm gonna sh come I'll show you that. Yeah. No, totally. Uh, so, grab. So, so how, does, how does the process go? So since it comes back, so first it would have to come back from Google, right? And then, right. Right. And then, what and then what happens uh yeah exactly so basically the first thing i remember the, that's the weirdness about javascript it's always like you're looking at things slightly out of order and the, especially because you have to figure out where to put the functions and either some people put it at the beginning or the top it doesn't matter uh but the what i do is i call append groups append groups then makes this groups list and it does that by calling grab group on the study link so and then i after that's done puts it in study, then I sort the individual people. But let's go back to grab group because that's actually the place where I'm grabbing the information. Okay. So grab group, if you remember, it had the fetch call. And the fetch call is the, the, new, the ES6 syntax. I didn't, I, this, is new, this was new to me uh, that you're actually, this is one of the reasons jQuery was so important. jQuery was a, a library that made really easy wrappers around clicking buttons on a web page and doing ajax calls which is the type of call you do when you go to a website and grab its data so now in javascript they have fetch which is super easy to use um, and what fetch does is i send this header saying hey i need to get some plain text in that normal utf8 style which is what we use in the web in the west i think this this character set changes like if it's in asia yeah right so i'm saying hey i need to get me some text uh and then my response is let the response equal this stuff once i get the response again this async await once i get the response back i want to see res.text so let's what is res what does the response actually look like So, 
again, once I make the fetch call, once I make the once I do the grab group function call with the link of the web of the spreadsheet, I grab all the data. And then I'm going to take the data and I'm going to grab the text off of it. And then I'm going to do some manipulation to that text. Uh oh, why is it failing to fetch? <laughs> we have no bananas. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Yeah, that's my. Uh, that's my uh, basically this try catch with an error. This is a syntax in JavaScript when you have a function, especially you do this with asyn asynchronous functions or response, you know, uh, request to the to requests to a server that try to do some code. If that code don't work, grab the error and do something with the error. So console logs the error and then I have an alert. Sorry, we have no bananas just to like remind me that something's not working. Um, so this is the response. This is what comes back from the fetch call. It goes to this URL, which is the Google spreadsheet. And it's doing it twice here because of the nature of how the async call works. And I'm sure that there's some way to make it only do that once. Maybe if I did this. I think if I did a wait console log res, it would actually be okay. But I, I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it. Um, okay. uh, just what happened here? There we go. Um, so let's look at the response again. So what you see when the response comes back, it has a body that's a readable stream. And this is something when you get to Node, what's coming back isn't an, a, a chunk of data, which actually I think that's a technical term. It's not a solid bunch it's that it's asking for a stream of data so it's like all this data is streaming at you um, and then like I said I there's headers um, where's the okay now I'm confused where is the text? <laughs> well, it comes back. And that's all the stuff coming back from Google. Right. Right. That's all. That's what's coming back from the, um, from the, from the Goog, from the fetch call to the Google spreadsheet. So why do, how do I know it's, oh, how do I know there's text? Wait, what does it go back to it? Uh, to the council it says text redirected false status 200 okay sure that yeah and i can't remember why i figured out i needed oh, wait, to grab is it is it the text that came back first up there yeah or this is this is telling you type no, yeah no 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 above the see what this says, that, yeah that drop down that's not the text these are both the same thing it's this okay. is just it's a weird thing that google is oh well, maybe Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's it. So, um, so this is the stream that's coming back. And then I looked in the headers. I looked in the prototype because it said response. And then this is actually what I need back. I just searched around until I found something that I needed. And I realized that was here, res.text. So this is the response object that comes back. And then I'm looking for the, uh, maybe I'm turning that into text. Ooh, maybe that is what I'm doing. Uh -huh. I'm running a function on that response to grab the, turn it into text. Okay. So let's consult, let's do it this way. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, dude, I was having a ton of fun learning functions yesterday. Like, just getting down, like, not just learning it, but, like, experimenting with it and just doing a bunch of uh, nitty-gritty stuff with it. Nice. It was, yeah, it was so much fun, bro. All right. So now this is the craziness. So get the response. I must have found this somewhere, and I need to get the text off the response, or I need it to be re text. And you notice here in the headers, I'm saying that the response 
I'm trying to get text. So it comes back, I run response.txt, and then this is what I get. Okay. This is just plain text and uh, of, of all of the information. And basically, the text is really in JSON format, to say it that way. And JSON format is almost like an object. It gives, uh, it's the same thing, you know, how objects are property value, but it's in quotation marks. This is the property, and this is the value. And if you notice down here, you start to see, here's the Tim Tebow stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it has, it's an array where it gets the stuff from, uh, and then the timestamp, the email address, his, uh, the username, you know, and again, here's the username and it's got all these, this nested format for some reason. And I don't understand why they do this, but basically this is a bunch of gobbledygook. It's just like all jammed together in one big text file. So what I need to do is I need to take off the extraneous characters so it's just text that's in the JSON format, and then I need to convert it to JSON. Oh, so this is a bunch of JSON. This is a bunch of text that basically looks like JSON, but when you look at it on your, in your IDE or you look at it in the console, it's doing interpretation for you. It's saying, oh, this is basically what it looks like. But JSON mm -hmm. isn't text. It's a, it's a formatting thing that JavaScript is doing under the hood. So, okay. So here, so I did, go ahead, it, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It returns it as JSON then, or as JSON text. It, J, it returns it as text that's basically set up already in JSON format. I need to okay. then manipulate the text so all there is is the text in JSON format, and then I'm going to convert that to JSON. So, so remember, we, we, did the re, we, we did the fetch call to get the response. The response came back as a readable stream. I then had to convert that to text, which is it's text coming as a stream, but I needed to make it just a, just a string, basically. That's what this does. Then you notice I console log that, and now I'm going to, yeah, go here. So, this call, remember, I grabbed the text, and then oh, I'm going to... Yeah, you, you missed a T in there. Oh, I see that. Thank you. Um, I grabbed the text, and then what I notice is, like, I don't need this front slash front shacks API callback, nor do I need this text. Hmm. And so, uh, so, I'm removing from the beginning that text. That's just some, some way that Google is packaging it all up. I just need everything inside the curly braces. And you all the way to the bottom here. And again then, oh, show more, it's big. <laughs> you know, at the Sorry. very bottom, I don't, I need the curly braces, but I don't need, I don't need this stuff. Right, so is that all of the form responses so far? That's that, all right. And so this oh, is going to be big if you got you know, what I've got. Thousands. Right. Dude, I've got, right. I got 24 people here. Dang. Like, right. This is a bunch of text for the 24 people. If you have 200 people, it's going to be 10 times as long, which is, which is why it comes as a readable stream because that's the nature of the internet. It's sending me these things going through, all the different nodes, you know, it's bouncing around the internet, right? And then when it hits your, when it hits you, the client, because I'm the end user here, when it hits me, the client, it then packages it all back together into this one giant string. But it has to wait for all the responses. That's how come I have to do it asynchronously. Mm, I see. Yeah, because if I, because like, you know, I'm going to get this chunk before I get this chunk, maybe. It's going to look weird. That's just how the internet works. And then underneath the internet, the HTTP protocol is how it knows how to restitch it all together into the thing that it was because it's sending up in those little packets. So as this giant data string, readable stream gets bigger and bigger, it's lots more packets. And then it like reformats itself under the hood. We never have to worry about that. Um, well, somebody does, but not my ass, you know, my dumb ass. <laughs> uh, and then it packages it back together. So, 
So again, what, it's, what I noticed when I studied this, and this is why you do a proof of concept. So you start with a small amount of data so you could actually see the data and be able to understand it before you move to production. I realized I just need to get rid of these characters at the beginning. So it's a text, which you can, this is replace. Replace is a built-in string method. So text, cheat text, or text is a string. So I then replace this from the beginning. So I replace this with nothing. And then at the end, you remember there was another uh, end parentheses and then a semicolon. And I replace that with this. And I got, I mean, I guess, I mean, I hacked it. This is what you do. Uh, I had to make sure that this type of stuff, what, I mean, obviously they're not repeating this, but then I wasn't sure like if I would be able to do this, but it's like, this is the only time that semicolons appear in the JSON in all this text. So that was lucky. Otherwise I'd have to do something like cut off the last two characters of the string or something like that. And luckily you can change string methods. So I do a replace and then I do a second replace. Nice. And then what I'm left with is sheet text. And this is what that will look like. And it's not much different. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Why are you doing this? There you go. And again, now it's just the curly. I just removed that text. Now I just have the stuff in the curly brackets. Oh, nice. Look at that. Right? Wow. And see, now nothing at the end either. So let me copy oh, this. Nice. So do we ever go over that? That's crazy. You just knocked out like so much stuff right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. Let me see. And all you did was like one line of code to do that. Ha ha. Yeah. So now you under start to see what I'm talking about. This is just a JSON formatter and I pretty printed it. Pretty print's a con do you know pretty print? Um I know beautify. Yeah, so pretty pr uh, pretty print is like you can do it in the console too. Um like if you're looking at sources, sometimes it'll just be like a especially minified text. If you look at minified code, it'll just be yeah. one line one string, one line. Terrible. You click here and you see how that says pretty print above it? Um, no, I don't see what you're looking at. So see my cursor? Uh-huh. You see if I go down here and then uh -huh. pretty print pops up. If okay. I were to do that and I had minif minified uh, code, I think I can see this from the jQuery site. Hold on. jQuery uses, used to use jQuery to run their code, to run their site. Oh, interesting. What the hell? Yeah, see here how it's all one one string, and it says, "Would you like to pretty print this minified file?" And I can mm -hmm. click here, and it pretty prints it. It basically takes it out of the one string, so you can actually see the the um, the indentions and the groupings a little bit better. Okay. Uh, that just makes it easier to read. That's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to make this easier to read. So it doesn't do anything to it, really. So if you remember, this is what I get, this big chunk. Again, I'll go back over it quick. So the first thing I got to do is I got to run grab group to get the text or get the information from the spreadsheet. I do the fetch call. I give it this header to tell it that I want. I'm looking for text. I want text. It sends me a readable stream that I run. I must have found this on Stack Overflow. I don't even know what the fuck this is doing. I mean, I know what it's doing, but I don't, I, I don't, know, how to, I don't, I don't know where I found it, right? So it runs some sort of function on the readable stream that makes it into a string. Then I replace the stuff at the beginning of the string, you know, this API, front slash API callback, the carriage return, you know, backslash n, then text and the beginning parentheses with nothing. Then I replace the ending parentheses and the semicolon with nothing. 
which gives me this cleaned up string, uh, just text, it's a string, that means that's more accurate. It's a string that's in JSON format, but now I got to make it JSON format. So this is what it's going needs. This is what it's going to look like when it's properly indented and stuff like that. And that's just for me, the developer. So you can see here that it's kind of like an object, right? It's got the curly brackets, property and value, property and value. And all of this stuff, I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. Uh, what, I don't need this stuff. You know, I don't care. I'm the, I mean, I know I'm the author. I don't care. <laughs> what I need is this stuff. Hmm. Okay, when, I, I when I get to Tim Tebow, I'm like, oh, cool. <clears throat> and what this is, is... entry and then I'm going to need this content off the entry where I can get the at the username the commitment the technology and when when begin when they want to be start the beginning so and again you can just see how complex this is and I have to find a way to get me exactly what I want so I mean I hacked on this part for a while and what I discovered is that, well, and so, so I have this string, all of this, that I need to turn into JSON. And that's when you do the JSON parse. Okay. So I know it sounds weird that this is just a string. It's not JSON object format. It's not an object, it's a string. And I need it to be a JSON so then I could access these values, much like you do with an object where you can, if the object name is Bob and you want to know, and Bob has a name and an address and I need to get Bob's name and his address, I can go Bob.name and then that, you know, you know let name equal Bob.name and then that will put Bob's name into that va value, but that's because it's an object and that's how you can access data out of an object. JSON is similar and I need to put this string into JSON to create it as a JSON object so I can do that thing, so I can do that same type of lookup. Okay. So I take sheet text and I run JSON dot parse on the string. And what this does is it takes the string, parses it into JSON. So, hmm. and what I've done now is I, this is now a JSON object, which is why I call it group object. Wait, where, oh, okay, I see, I see. Right, I'm just stepping through this, this, this is grab group. I'm just stepping through this code. This is the, this is how, to show you like, Oh, cool. I got stumped back from the Google sheet. Now, what format is it in? How do I access what I need? Oh, it's a string. I need to, it's a readable stream. Oh, I need to turn that into a string. Oh, and then I need to remove characters from that string. And now I need to turn it into a JSON object. And so I'm going to, I'm going to show you the Google, the JSON object. And this is the JSON object. Doesn't look much different. And what I noticed, though, is that, oh, feed. Hmm. And then feed. So this is that object, group object. Hmm. When I open up that object, I see the feed. I'm like, oh, what's in there? Ah, here's all this information about what came back, the author, the links, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm like, what's entry? Entry are the 24, uh, the 23 things, right? So you see the next line is, well, then let the group array, because it's what I realized, like, oh, this is an array of objects. See the, the square bracket? Yeah. Right. There's 24 objects inside. Whoops. Damn it. That's convenient, eh? Yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's the way that JSON works. 
It's the way that they, it's, it's just the way that they grouped it. They made it so, because somewhere the person, somewhere each of those, um, each of the people that input stuff into the form, that has to be stored in a way. And so that's being stored with, as, in, uh, as, as in JSON. They're using JSON. I mean, there's probably tons of other ways to do this, but JSON works because JSON is shareable through JavaScript and can be what they call serialized, meaning it can be turned into a string and it can be returned from a string back into JSON. You turn things into strings because that's easy. Sending strings through the internet, that's, that's just data. You're sending a string of data. And that's how everything is sent. This, what we're doing right now, talking and videoing, that just becomes a string of data that is sent from one place to another place and then it's reconverted back into an object in such a way that it can be manipulated. So yeah, it's convenient. That's the only reason the internet works. So each of these is going to be a person. So if you notice here, like, again, I saw, oh, cool. Open it up. I see feed. I'm like, I know I got about 24 things. I see entry. Then, then what I really need is just that array, just this entry array. I don't need all this stuff that's, that's, that talks about the entire chunk of data that come back. I just need the people data. Yeah. So let's let the group array equals group object dot feed dot entry. And you see what I'm, well, whoops. I hope you see what I'm doing here. I'm just slowly, and I write really, I don't do this shit like these super coders where they're trying to do all this in one line of code. I'm like that doesn't make any sense to me. I can't go back and read it afterwards. Right. Sometimes I'll comment the fuck out of it too, but uh, so, excuse yeah, my language. I yeah. No, I do. I hear you. But um, for I'm yeah, yeah, for the people listening, I, I'm down. Uh, so this is a wait group dot feed dot entry. I'm going to console log that. And if you're listening, leave a comment and say thank you to this man for you know, even walking me <laughs> through this and, and writing this. You know, this, this right here is going to help all of you guys, everybody, seriously. Thank you, yeah, dude. I again, the reason I'm doing this is the same reason that we're all doing this. You learn some stuff, you pay that forward. Uh, all the help that I get, I pay that forward back. You know, that's that's what this is all about. Like uh, we, uh, Jonathan and I were talking today about this friend of mine, Rita. Rita and I were TAs a long time ago in a super basic um, JavaScript class. And Rita's now a real dev who does instructing at a high level on remote boot camps she's gonna she likes me i helped her back then she's gonna help me continue to get better at this stuff moving forward because this is what it's about rise that raise those boats raise all those boats together you know dude it's weird didn't i tell you that like everybody that freaking that commits like something to w3 develops repository ends up getting a job it's so weird bro and i like i, I told you you're probably not going to be here for much longer and then boom you hit me with this i'm loving it dude I, it's awesome it's so cool yeah, yeah, I'm going to, well, hopefully some of those people that have got jobs keep, will keep coming back, not just to like, hang out, but to come into the commitment of a team to help build the platform. That's, that's always a challenge because once you get that job, you're working 40 hours a week, but you're still studying 40 hours a week, you know, so. That's true, that's true. But we'll, you know, we just need to do a little bit of scrum master management on the people, make those teams work. Once we get those build groups going, that's what some of the build groups can be, you know, working on the platform. So, so here we go with what we got back now is just the array of people. Again, okay. notice this weirdness of this GSX dollar sign. Do and then uh, I don't know why they do it, but I do know, I knew how to work around it. And then if okay. you notice, it's not just that it's like beginning isn't just a simple value. Beginning is a, another object. And so, with the dollar sign T is the property in 12 a.m. So what I need to do is get beginning and then the value 12 a.m. And this is, I mean, this is just how they do it. So it's repeated each time. For commitment, you know, the value is underneath this dollar sign T. I don't know why they do it. There's probably some validation thing that they're doing or the way they break things apart. You know, Google, you know, Google and Amazon and all of them, Facebook are the masters. They're doing all sorts of crazy things to save time and save memory overhead, you know? So mm -hmm. all I got to do and all we got to do ever is hackers. If you're making a call to an API, cause that's what we're doing. We made a call to the Google spreadsheet API to get data back. 
uh, I got to figure out how that data is structured so I can get the stuff off of it I need. So remember, we just did the group object feed entry, which is the group array. And then all grab group does is it gets me to this point, gets this array of objects. Remember, separation of concerns. I, in this function, do basically one thing. I go and get to, go to a link. Well, I do more than one thing, but it's like one functionality. I go to a link and I return, I, and to get data, and then I return data. So some people might break this up into even more chunks where they're like have all these little tiny functions and that's functional programming where you simplify down to it does one thing and you just then put those all the little pieces together. In this uh, case, that's part of functional programming okay. uh, and that data doesn't mutate. So you pass in parameters that you need and you kick out a return and you don't have things in the global space. Well, I'm a little hackier than that right now. So uh, basically, I grab the link from the global, you know, uh, the link is in the global space. I grab the link, uh, there I, I call the function with the link, and then I go to the link and grab the data, and I break the data down to the, not the simplest piece, but pretty much I'm just getting back the data that I need. I'm leaving extraneous data. I did the JSON uh, stuff to make this easier. Uh, or you know uh, parsing and removing of bad text and then I return back then I return back the array and as long as there's no error I don't have to be told I don't have any bananas <laughs> All right. so let me comment this out now if you remember we went back to grab group here and the reason this is a promise all is because I kind of wanted when it gets going all the way, I wanted to be able to grab the groups, grab the build, grab the study groups, grab the build groups all at the same time, promise all, then make sure it does all of these things at, at the same time, uh, or it waits until they're all done, I should, I should say, and then it dumps the, it's an array of two Two and two element, two entries, I guess. Two piece, two things in the array, and those things are arrays themselves, and they're arrays of the different types of groups. At this point, again, we're not really doing this build; um, we're just working on the groups. And then after I do that, remember we console log studied, and what we get back is that, you know, that's what comes back. That's the, I, uh, is that the entry? That's the entry. That's um, the yeah. Is that after it's all uh, been um, uh, like weeded down to the necessities? Exactly, because that's what we did here. Grab group study link is the first item in the groups list array. And so study is groups list uh, at okay. position zero, the first one. Bam. <coughs> so just, just showing you like all of this, the, the, the reason doing this one thing here and pouring into the variable is all done in this function grab group. Now I have this, the studies, I have this list, the list, I have an array of the people um, who are, I have an array of the people who want to be in the study groups. And now I have to sort those people. Okay. Um, because, you know, the 23 are just the 23 basically in order of how they signed up. And, but they signed up for different things. And if you remember, um, sort people is this function that is giant conditional. And I changed this a little bit, but if you remember, I said like for each, so the way that sort people works is it puts in an array and for the array are each piece of the array is a person. So the array is the people, the people that want to do the study groups. And then for each of those people, so for each person in the array, I need you to, ch I need to check over this giant conditional list. If they, and that based on their pieces, right? So GSX beginning, GSX commitment, GSX email address, GSX technology. Do you remember that? Oh, yes. Right, and so that's what I'm doing for each of those pieces for these three pieces, if that's the case, then push, your, push their new username pushes an array method that 
basically takes something and puts it on, puts it as the last element of the array. You just keep pushing things into that array. These arrays are here. The first element in the array is the name, which is the name, this title. And then I'm going to, Tom Brady wanted to be JavaScript full-time 6 a.m. Bam, he gets pushed as the second element in the array. And then there's no more people that got pushed. So these are all open. So did you, did you get the, I remember you were saying that uh, with the. Um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't get the open to work, but that's okay. I mean, that's, that's, that's a to do. And that's for the next sprint. That's, no, no, no. Cause I noticed that it, that it, that it does have open right there. So I, yeah, I, 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 it's, this is the proof of concept before. And so it, uh, it didn't work. No, it looks oh, okay. like it works, but there's, there's certain times that it's certain edge cases that it doesn't work and the edge cases are necessary. So um, I left it off in the of one for the site. So I'm going to go ahead okay. and stop this. Yeah, I'm going to have to stop this and I'm going to create another video. So I think this is a good place. This is basically as far as I can get with the proof of concept. What meaning that that I change some I change some things in the in the next one. Uh, okay. That make it a little bit easier to see, and that way we can actually start talking about how we're going to have to alter the um, uh, the the form that you already have on there. Okay. So so let me go ahead and stop the share. Wave hi to everybody, and then I'll stop <laughs> stop recording.